Hey there, basketball fans. I'm your host, Harrison Graham, here on NBA Now by Chat Sports. Lots of rumors and a little bit of news, including the All-Star Game uh, information reserves being announced. We'll talk about that toward the end of the video. But let's jump on into the juicy stuff. Kristaps Porzingis being linked to NBA trade rumors. A couple of reports out there, Bleacher Report, and then also Ian Begley threw out an idea that maybe the Mavs could trade KP to the Warriors. L let's just get the background. The report is that the Mavs have been gauging what the trade value for Chris Epps Porzingis could be. Now, Porzingis has obviously been up and down for the Mavericks. The main issue has been injuries, which go back to his New York Knicks days, and it shouldn't be surprising. He's 7'3", 240 pounds, a history of the, in the history of the NBA. Guys that big, yeah, they tend to stay injured a lot of the time. When he's out there, he's good. Problem is, he's not out there nearly enough. Now, Mark Cuban and Rick Carlisle have dismissed these rumors, but you got to figure there's a little bit of truth to them. I highly doubt these guys would just make up these reports. So, Cuban said this, it's not accurate. We have not discussed him in a trade at all. Has not happened. And by the way, we are not happy that there is a supposed Western Conference executive ripping on one of our players. There is no trade discussion. I think they just used it as a way to put out there that they what they think of KP. This is going to be something to monitor and something to watch over the next month leading to the NBA trade deadline on March 25th. Now, do I think the Mavericks are actively shopping Kristaps Porzingis? No, I don't. Do I think they're behind the scenes could be potentially gauging from other execs and teams around the league like, hey, hypothetically, what would a trade for Porzingis uh, get us in return? I think that's possible, and I think that's reasonable to do if you are the Mavericks because he continues to be hurt. He's missed the last two games with back stiffness despite the Mavs having eight days off due to the power outage situation in the state of Texas. He has not played. He's been good this year when he has played. 20-8 and eight guy, 35% from three, uh, low mid-40s from the field. Definitely not bad, certainly not what we saw in the NBA bubble prior to his uh, knee injury uh, late last season, but it's always going to be something that's hanging over the Mavericks franchise as long as Porzingis is there. Can he stay healthy? Will he be available when it matters the most come playoff time? He wasn't last year. He played a couple of games against the Clippers, then they had to shut him down. This year, he's played in about half of the games. It just is what it is. There's always going to be that injury worry when it comes to KP, which is unfortunate because I think a fully healthy Porzingis with Luka Doncic could be the best duo in the NBA, but I'm not sure we'll ever see that reach its full fruition. Now, we'll ask you this question. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. Will the Mavs trade Kristaps Porzingis? Type Y for yes, type N for no. We'll expand on this trade topic on our Mavericks only channel, youtube.com slash Mavs TV. We'll have a video up over there uh, sometime later today, so stay tuned for that. But go ahead, answer this question. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Let's get into the latest around DeMarcus Cousins. He has been released by the Houston Rockets. That officially took place on Tuesday. We knew over the last several days that that was coming because the Rockets are committing to youth. They're committing to small ball. And it makes sense for both parties to say, hey, we appreciate your work, but we're not making the playoffs this year, and you make more sense to go to a contender. We'll help you out. And they're still guaranteeing his contract uh, for this season. So good on the Houston Rockets for doing that. Uh, this was a cordial separation here. No bad blood on either side. Now, I do expect to have, see several teams show interest in Boogie Cousins. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm sure he'll take a little bit of time to consider his options. Might even wait until after the All-Star game, which is coming up pretty quickly on March 7th. Now, from what we saw from Boogie this year, he can still score. He's still effective offensively, even though the efficiency hasn't you know, been there so far this year at, you know, just under 38%. But we know he can score. We know he can rebound. The biggest issue with Boogie, even before the injuries, but especially after the injuries, is he's just not a very good defender. He's not, you know, super agile. He's not super quick. And plus, now you add all the uh, knee issues that he's had over the years. He, he, he's, he's a liability defensively. There's just no way around it. Now, can he be an energy bench guy that can get you, a, you know, 8 to 12 points and grab 6 to 8 rebounds on a contending team? I think that's possible. Um, but, you know, it just it, it's one of those things that with the injuries, you don't know how much you can rely on him. But I definitely think there are a lot of contending teams that will and should
should show interest in Cousins to be a guy that can come off the bench and give you a little bit of something uh, in, in a playoff series potentially. So go ahead and predict it for me. Which team will sign DeMarcus Cousins? I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Which team will sign Boogie now that he's been released by the Houston Rockets? Now, we've got jerseys available for you guys at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. Tons of them available for all 30 NBA teams. You Laker fans, yep, we got LeBron, we got AD, we have several others as well. Uh, Luka Doncic and the Mavs, you can get KP and uh, several other players. Lots of players on every single team out there. Chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. Don't miss this opportunity. It's a good price. It's a good deal. Go to that link. It'll be in the comments. It'll be in the description. We got Curry. We got Tatum. We got all kinds of players available for you guys. And not just these specific jerseys. You got alternate jerseys, home, away, uh, you know, the, the city edition ones. All kinds of different ones are available at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. I love this Philadelphia look with the Joel Embiid. I know Ben Simmons is available in that one also. One more time, link is available in the comments. It's in the description. Chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. Could the Lakers be signing DeMarcus Cousins? Well, the latest report says they're actually not expected to pursue Boogie Cousins despite uh, releasing Quinn Cook. More on that in a little bit, but... I'm surprised by this. He signed with the Lakers last season. Obviously, he tore his ACL as he was preparing for the season and never actually played with the Los Angeles Lakers. But I just figured with the familiarity there and with the fact that Anthony Davis is injured right now and the Lakers need a big, that's not just like something they could use. That's something they need need uh, on their team. I'm surprised that the reports are that as of now, they are not expected to pursue DeMarcus Cousins uh, to, with that open roster spot. I'm a little bit surprised by this. And quite frankly, I disagree with it. I think the Lakers should sign DeMarcus Cousins. Here's the write-up from the LA Times here saying multiple people with knowledge of the situation said they don't expect the Lakers to reunite with Houston center DeMarcus Cousins, obviously a free agent now. The team will, however, monitor the buyout and trade market for potential additions to their front court. Uh, you've already got a guy available and DeMarcus Cousins. Lakers, go sign him. Like, worst case scenario, he's a bad fit. You sign him to a non-guaranteed deal and you just you cut him. It's it's not a big deal. I think the I think Bookie would sign with LA in a heartbeat. He wanted to play with the Lakers last year. It obviously didn't work out uh, with the ACL injury. You got a second chance now for both sides on this deal I would sign him obviously I wouldn't give him notable money here but he's not going to have a major market anyway like it's going to be a minimum uh, limited guarantee type of deal so why not go sign DeMarcus Cousins we know he's boys with Anthony Davis going back to their days uh, at, at New Orleans both played college ball at Kentucky obviously at different times there but you're not going to get this together with these two guys once AD is back, but I think the comfort, the familiarity, what Cousins could give you from an offensive standpoint especially is intriguing to me, and he can grab you some boards, which has been an area of concern for the Los Angeles Lakers so far this season. And guys, I hate to tell you this, Anthony Davis might be out a while. Like, I know they said four weeks. Don't be surprised if it's six. Like, they are going to be very, very careful when it comes to Anthony Davis, so why not bring on a guy like DeMarcus Cousins? I don't get it. I think it's weird, quite frankly. I think the timing of cutting Quinn Cook and saying you're not interested in DeMarcus Cousins is strange. Why not just keep Cook and then cut him if you see someone else become available? That doesn't really make much sense to me, but that's what we know as of now, and we'll just have to wait and see over the next coming days and weeks if that ends up changing. So I'll ask you guys. Clearly, my answer is yes. Should the Lakers sign Boogie Cousins? Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. I don't think there's really any risk here. Worst case, he's bad and you cut him. So I'm typing my one for yes. I want to hear it from you guys in the comments. Now get subscribed to our Lakers channel if you're watching on the Lakers Report. Go ahead and hit that big red button. But if you're watching on Chat Sports, our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, you see the link below. It's youtube.com slash Lakers TV. We're ramping up our Lakers coverage again. Two, three, four videos a week as of now. And we will certainly expand on that in the very near future, especially as we get closer and closer to the NBA trade deadline. You see the link on screen. It's youtube.com slash Lakers TV, the latest Lakers news rumors, trade deadline coverage, uh, some game recap stuff, especially once we get closer to the playoffs. So go ahead and subscribe to our Lakers-only YouTube channel.
A little bit more Lakers news. We kind of alluded to it. They have waived Quinn Cook, which, again, is very puzzling to me as to why they apparently aren't interested in DeMarcus Cousins. But the report is that they just want a free roster spot for uh, once a trade or buyout candidate that they like becomes available. I still don't understand why that's not Boogie Cousins, but it is what it is. Cook wasn't doing much for them this year, playing less than four minutes per game. Now, we'll see where he lands. He'll certainly have some value for teams. He has won two NBA championships championships in his career one with the Warriors one with the Lakers uh, obviously this past season he can still shoot the problem is that's all he can do he can't defend he's not much of a ball handler and he's undersized so he's kind of he's a major liability on the defensive side of the court I still think the Lakers need a big I think they should sign DeMarcus Cousins but uh, maybe they have something else up their sleeve maybe they're uh, looking at some other options there and if, uh, if they if they do sign or trade for someone trust me we will cover it here on the Lakers report. So again, make sure you are subscribed. I'd like to see Boogie Cousins back in LA uh, to, to, to get that second chance from last year, but doesn't look like that's gonna happen as of now, which again, I don't really get because you look at this front court with Anthony Davis hurt, yeah, Montrose Harrell is fine. He could score. He's also only a 6'7 big. He's not that big there. Markeith Morris, Mark Gasol, they're not giving you much these days. Gasol's a nice vet. Morris is a decent bench guy, but I still think they definitely need more front court depth. I, again, I think over the All-Star break, they're going to be monitoring which guys are available, and we will see who they end up getting. Quinn Cook, he's gone. We'll see where he ends up landing. Again, playing less than four minutes per game. For the Lakers, averaging just over two points per game this season. I'm sure someone will end up signing Quinn Cook, but his time in Los Angeles appears to be over. If you love the NBA, if you love chat sports and what you're seeing here, this is what we do. We cover the latest NBA news and rumors and a whole lot more. If you're an NFL fan, we have a ton of NFL coverage as well. Hit that big red button and subscribe. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. All right, some news, and then we'll wrap things up here. The All-Star Pool is set. Uh, the reserves were announced on Tuesday. We heard the starters last week were announced, but now we've got the, the full pool of players. Uh, we mentioned uh, on one of our recent videos it'll be Team LeBron versus Team Durant. The draft uh, format will continue as LeBron and KD will uh, will draft uh, each of their uh, – uh, uh, rest of their starting lineup and, and reserves there, and uh, it'll be fun. We'll see what ends up happening. I don't have a ton of interest, but the draft format has made it at least a little bit intriguing. Now, there's always snubs. Let's show you who the uh, reserves are, and then we'll debate on who the biggest snub was this year. Chris Paul, Paul George, Dame, and Donovan Mitchell uh, make up four of your seven West reserves there. Again, it'll be a draft format, but uh, the initial pool is based on West and East, and then KD and LeBron end up drafting the bigs in the Western Conference. Rudy Gobert Zion Williamson and Anthony Davis. Notice there was no uh, Devin Booker out of that group. Very interesting. Eastern Conference, James Harden, Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, and Ben Simmons. Some of your guards uh, there in the East. Then your front court of Jason Tatum, Julius Randle, who's having a great year, and Nikola Vucevic, who's about the only player worth a damn on the Orlando Magic. But all that being said, notable snubs as always. No Devin Booker, poor Mike Conley. I don't think he's ever going to make an all-star game. He just can't quite get in there. Tobias Harris is having a great year for Philadelphia. I thought he might get in, but it's competitive. Trey Young uh, I thought was a notable snub as well. Then DeMar DeRozan, who's quietly had a great season for the San Antonio Spurs. Now, there will be one of the, these Western Conference uh, players making the team because Anthony Davis I do not anticipate being available. So maybe Booker, maybe Conley, maybe DeRozan, maybe one of these guys uh, gets in there. But uh, I, Devin Booker especially, I think that's a major, major snub. I love CP3, but Booker makes that team go. I, I, I thought that was very weird. Who's the biggest all-star snub? Chris Paul even said it. Who is the biggest snub for this year? LeBron called uh, Devin Booker the most underappreciated player in the NBA. Let's hear it from you guys. I'm going with Devin Booker. You can tweet me your thoughts on this as well, at HGramNFL. I talk a lot of NBA over there also. Biggest all-star snub for this year. Let me know, and we'll see you next time.